Well, Monica joins us in studio to talk about an initiative called Build the Faith. And, uh, you know, Monica, first of all, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, James. I can't wait to talk about your story because it's, it's very touching. Um, we remember talking about your daughter, praying for your daughter here, um, who sadly passed away in January of 2016. Um, tell us a little bit about that story. Well, Christina was diagnosed when she was six. Um, she was diagnosed with a very rare type of cancer. And we were given, she was given two weeks to live. Um, by God's mercy, uh, she was able to live five and a half years. Which is incredible. It is incredible. It was itself a miracle for her to be able to live as long as she did. But it was more of a miracle the way that she lived her cross. Um, she taught us a lot through her journey. Um, she was little when she was diagnosed, so basically she was praying the way the mom was telling her to pray. And as she was growing up, she started to teach us. It mm -hmm. changed. And um, oh, it became very, very inspirational. And um, her face was so strong that she told us once that she would never ask God to heal her. She would always say, do with my life whatever you want to do with it. How do you think that a, a young child, and here's some beautiful pictures of her, how, how do you think a young child like this gets that much of a perspective about the love <coughs> of God? I think Christina came for a post, per, with a purpose. Uh, she would always say, nothing is coming out of my mind, Mom. It's, uh, I think it's God. It's something that just came up. I once told her, can you ask him to heal her, to heal you? And she said, I want to ask him that if he needs me in heaven, I'm more than willing to go to heaven with him. So it was something very natural that um, her face was so strong and God was first on top of anything, not even family. So I think she was chosen to bring us closer to him. Must have been very comforting too for you as a mom that your daughter had this strong faith and belief in God and the love God had for her, especially during these moments that were very challenging. Yes, um, it helped us a lot. It helped us to learn how we should all carry our cross because uh, all of us, we carry one, uh, regardless of how everyone else sees it, it's a heavy cross. Mm -hmm. And Christina taught us to carry a cross, trusting in God all the time. She would always say, Jesus, I trust in you every day, every morning, every treatment. And she would really live a beautiful, joyful life. Like, it seems that it didn't hurt. It didn't, it wasn't heavy for her. Sometimes I would ask, you don't have any pain, Christine? And she said, no, Mom, I do have pain. But it's okay. This is what God wants from me. And I will carry it. And she would offer for souls in purgatory who had no one to pray for them. What a great example. You know, she would made it in that prayer box <coughs> a number of times, I yes. think, because we'd get letters. And we were blessed with people from all over the world praying for her and for our family. That's what kept us going. That's what is keeping us going. And you started with just rosary, right? Didn't you start with saying uh, the rosary? So I, um, when she was going on through treatment, I had promised God that um, regardless if Christina was in heaven with him or she was going back to school, I would not go back to work and I would just give my time for him. Mm -hmm. So I started a prayer group when she was in remission for the first time at home and we started praying and while we were praying a few months into it, somebody brought um, the story about a priest who needed to build a church and did not have the money and I asked Christina, what if we will start making rosaries and we'll give the money to the priest and so we started making rosaries to raise money for a church. Wow. Okay, so, so how do we get from this, this beautiful story of Christina and the, this, this beautiful story of faith to build the faith. How do we, how do we get from there to now what you're well, doing? It was easy. It was Christina. It was easy. It was easy because it's, uh, it's, it was a transition. I think it was God's plan. Christina lived a life of faith. Um, so we were inspired by the way that she was carrying her cross through faith. God was taking her by the hand and she was letting him take her. So we wanted other people, when this friend brought the church that needed money to be constructed in South America, we were like, we we're so blessed to have so many churches here, right? Mm -hmm. And Christina Faith have teach us to carry our cross and God have helped us and hold us so tight that we want others that are not as privileged that we are here in the United States to have a church to be able to go and get this faith and the strength that they need to carry with the daily crosses. So that's how we ended up starting making rosaries with the money for this church. But it got out of proportion because Christina had a website of prayers. There were more than 70,000 people praying for oh her. Oh my goodness. So when they heard that she was making rosaries, everyone wanted her rosary. So 
we started making the rosaries to sell the rosaries and we ended up with Build the Faith, the nonprofit. We needed to create a nonprofit at that time. So it was something when, you know, when you're doing something for God, it was her life. She was living her life. It was just one next step. We didn't even think about it. We ended up having a nonprofit and not realizing that we were going to make a nonprofit. So everything just went one step to the other. So, and what do you do now? So you, you help churches. <coughs> what, else, what else do you do? Uh, we do a very different type of evangelization. Uh, we do alongside with Father Michael Harrington and Father Ed Riley. Good guys. Um, yes, they are part of our life. We're part of the Holy Family Institution. And with them, in Build the Faith, we run retreats for family, for women, for men in the Boston area. Um, we also at Build the Faith do teenagers' workshops. What we do is we do go to Catholic school and religious education. We talk to them about Christina's faith and her story. We teach the kids to make the rosaries, and then they help us as community service to sell the rosaries after Masses. And um, we have the Rosary Group on Mondays, too. And we are hosting this time, for the second year, um, a concert, a Catholic concert, alongside with St. Mary of the Annunciation in Cambridge with Father Harrington. It's a collaboration of Build the Faith and Father Harrington Church. And um, for youth and family, we had 400 people coming, family and kids, last year. It's Catholic music with different rhythms. And we're worshiping God through music. And how does this help you and your husband, your family, in the healing process, doing something like build a faith with Christina's memory? In my case in particular, um, it's given me a reason. Um, I finally found m my space, what, my gift, what am I here for? Uh, Christina made me realize that we're all here for a purpose and a reason. And at the end, the final one for everyone is to be in heaven with God. Mm -hmm. and now I'm being able to work for him and find my way back to him, which I wasn't looking before. Um, so he, she had brought us closer to God and to realize that we are all here in, the world, in this world to be able to win our way back to heaven with him. Now I'm going to ask you a question. It's a difficult question, and, and, um, but I, I, I'm just curious about this. For you as a mom, I'm a dad, I've got, I've got three children, and I can't imagine being in the circumstance you were in, what was, what was the hardest part for you and what did what'd you learn about yourself through all of this? My hardest part was like, it was a mix of a feeling. The day that she died, January 26, I know it was the most important day of her life because she told me before she died many day, weeks or e months before. Uh, the day that somebody dies is the most important day because they're going back to heaven. Mm -hmm. She asked us if she died before us that she wanted everyone to wear rainbow colors at the mass because it was the day of celebration, right? So it was a mix of feeling. Uh, on that same day, she stopped carrying her crowd and she stopped, started to enjoy eternal life with God because I'm sure that she went directly to heaven. But on that day, I started to carry my cross and the hardest time started then, not before when I have her with me. Um, I've learned to trust Jesus with uh, all my thoughts and my strength and to hold on tight so every time when I woke up, wake up I said I wouldn't do everything for you my Lord and I'll just have all the strength and the joy that she had to continue life and I'm actually enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I'm at a point that I don't mind if he calls me right now I'm um, hopefully that I can look into his eye and say I did everything that I can to help you here but if he leaves me here I have a lot of things that I want to do for him too so I'm at a great point I live with a cross heart it's pierced yeah uh, but I'm happy, I'm in peace and I'm enjoying and I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now with Build the Faith and I'm being so blessed. I feel that he gave us a second chance through Christina, my husband and I and our kids and we're taking it and giving the most that we can. And you, you, were you just recently in Rome? I was. Why were you so in Rome? <laughs> I just, I Barney told me that by the way. When you said yes to God, Oh, you have to be sure when you're saying yes, because he will make sure that you... Well, you are working for him. You're working for him. So I made a promise. Uh, for me, it's very difficult to speak in public. Uh, you're not going to believe it, but sitting here... You're doing great. <laughs> Look at well, you. Holy Spirit at its best. Um, but um, I promise him that whenever somebody called me to talk about him, I will go. So I'm being called to give testimonies at different retreats. I went to Chile, to Colombia, to Rome. And the retreats that we do here, which are amazing... Um, 
I invite everyone to come and ex to have that experience. Uh, but I'll go and work for him, and that's part of the work, to give testimony. So Rome was the first retreat for Spanish-speaking women of a group that is called Emmaus. So I was there talking about God and what he had done in my life and my family's life and Christina's life. And what do you, what do you have coming up? We have many fundraisers. We have a family retreat in, at the end of August. We have a women's retreat on October 4th to the 6th. Uh, we have the concert on September 28th for all the family members, so please bring everyone. It's going to be an amazing, amazing night. Uh, it's very beautiful to see all these kids uh, living the faith, enjoying the faith, knowing that being Catholic, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's not just praying as they think. It's worshiping God and giving Him thanks for every day, for life, which is a miracle. Celebrating. Celebrating as, life. Yes. yes, Christina said, it you know, is. those rainbow colors, celebrating And trusting life. Jesus the way that she did. She would always say, Jesus, I trust in you, even though she was in pain. Mm -hmm. So to trust Him and to trust Him at every moment and any time. Where can people find more information out about uh, this month? Buildthefaith.org. Uh, well, that's pretty easy. Yes, Buildthefaith.org. Build build uh, you can find our groceries that we sell them. We can find all the events that we're having, all the fundraisers that are coming up, and the churches that we're building. We built a church in Colombia. Then we, Where you're originally from? Yes, that was the first church. And then we built a company in Argentina, and we just started our third project a month ago in Nicaragua for 2,000 work people, very low income, who don't have a church. Um, they had a place where they were receiving Eucharist once a month. Oh my gosh. So we just started a month ago, so everyone can come to our website, donate, help, be part of Build the Faith. It's amazing what, it's got, what God is doing through the seed that Christina planted here. And uh, there's a lot that we can do. What a great example Christina is to all of us. What a great example you and your husband and your family oh, are to all of us too. Like I said, Holy Spirit at his best. Right? Thanks so much for joining us today. No, thank you, Jerry, for having us here.